Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates, I'm Yabwile, and I'm a marriage and family therapist. Today, I'm gonna to be jumping into one of the most requested models on my channel, and that is Gottman. If you're curious about one of the most popular approaches to couples therapy, stay tuned. So if you're looking for a more practical approach to couples therapy, I definitely recommend that you check out my six ways to build intimacy in a relationship. I refer a lot to Gottman's techniques in that video, and that's actually where a lot of you wanted me to go more in depth about his model. So as usual, I always have to say thank you to everyone who requests videos, especially those who are letting me know which models you want to see. So a little shout out to all of you who have requested Gottman. Let's jump right in. So one of the biggest things that we have to emphasize with Gottman is that it is research-based. A lot of models in marriage and family therapy are critiqued because they're theoretical. A lot of the models I've talked about on here, there's not a lot of research to back it up. And Gottman is viewed as like an evidence-based practice, meaning that they have conducted research to prove the validity and effectiveness of their model. And so this is a model that is designed specifically with couples in mind. They have measures of predictability as to whether or not a couple will stay married or get divorced based on the things that I'm going to talk with you about today. Now, keep in mind, this is just an overview. This is not a deep, deep dive. There are Gottman certified therapists that can give you a deep dive and, you know, know the ins and outs. I'm just giving you the basics of Gottman really enough for those of you who are going to take an exam and this model might be on your exam. These are the basic things that you need to know. So, you know, I love to start model reviews with the buzz words to look for because when you're taking practice exams or the actual exam there are going to be certain words you need to look for that'll help refresh your memory like okay this is Gottman so the phrase love maps life dreams the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the other phrase is a sound marital house these are some of the coin phrases that if you see that on the exam just know for sure these this is a Gottman question they're usually not going to make it that obvious but if you are using these words in your practice it should make it a lot easier to identify Gottman related questions on your exam. So now let me start explaining what those things mean. We're gonna start first by talking about the theorist. So John Gottman, what I love about this model is that even though most of the time people refer just to John, he actually collaborated with his wife, Julie Gottman on this project. And I think that is very telling. You know, again, I always encourage you all, if you're studying for the exam, you want to get to know the theorists that create these models. You wanna understand, oh, they have this background or this thing happened in their life and that makes sense why they view therapy in this specific way. Clearly Gottman really viewed relationships and marriage as a partnership and that's even evident in his work that his wife is a huge contributor to what is known as the Gottman method. Now even though colloquially we do refer to it as the Gottman method, they actually refer to it as the sound marital house theory. And you might ask, okay, why is it called a marital house theory? They really thought about relationships or marriages specifically like a house. You know, a house has structure, it has layers, it has levels. And so there are seven levels to building a solid house for you and your partner. So a good marriage in their eyes, it's characterized by friendship. It's characterized by having shared meaning, shared goals. So let me share with you how you can check to see if your relationship is in that space or for therapists, check to see how your couples are doing when it comes to these different levels. So do your couples build love maps? What does that mean? That means how familiar are you with your partner's inner world, their thoughts, their feelings? Are you in tune? Do you care? This is just inquiring about your partner. You want to know about what they care about. This is how you start building that foundation for a good relationship. The next level is to share fondness and admiration. And really this just boils down to being positive towards your partner, noticing the things that they're doing right and commenting on it. Be affectionate, be respectful you know, just positive regard towards your partner and just having 
a relationship characterized by admiration. Turn toward, this is really important. This is something that I always come back to, which is when your partner presents you with an emotional need or particularly an issue, something they're struggling with, do you try to fight them on it or do you turn towards them and have an open heart and a listening ear? So turning toward them, being open to even difficult conversations. The next layer, which is in my opinion, kind of really a summation of those previous three is to maintain a positive perspective. Their term for it is a positive sentiment override. So by doing those three things that we talked about, you know, maintaining admiration, inquiring about the things that they care about with your love maps, turning toward them, all of those things will create a understanding in your relationship that it's positive. It will make it easier for you to respond positively later when you build the habit of doing it now. It makes it easier for your partner to expect positivity when something is happening, particularly in those moments that could be conflictual, moments that could be really sensitive, having an expectation that within your relationship, you listen to one another and you're positive towards one another, building that expectation. This doesn't mean you never say anything negative. It just means that more often than not, your relationship is characterized by more positivity than negativity. All right, you guys might hear a little rain, thunder in the background. I tried to wait it out but let's just plow through and think of it as study ambiance, okay? The next level is how you manage conflict. And this is really having the discernment to know that there are some problems you can solve and other problems you can't solve. So if there's a problem that you can solve, let's say you've got an issue with the kitchen always being a mess, nobody ever wanting to cook, but both of you needing to eat and not having the money to always go out. Maybe you can just say, all right, this person actually likes cooking and this person actually doesn't mind cleaning. So just talking, being open, being honest. I say throw out expectations of what society tells you is supposed to happen within your marriage and making it work for you. That's a solvable problem. But then you might have some issues where you've got one person who might be one religion and another person who's another religion. Not harping on those things. Definitely having the space to be open and process and hear their perspective and be genuinely curious about their view on life, but not using everything as an opportunity to debate, to argue, to believe little. You want to have a space where you can actually process things, unpack them with your partner and know things that are solvable versus the things that are just unresolvable and just better left as an open-ended question. The next level, the second to last level in this house is making life dreams come true. And what that means is supporting your partner in whatever their life dreams are. A lot of times what we'll see instead is that a person might hear their partner's dream and either think, it's impossible or think it's a waste of time, think that it's not going to be a good source of revenue, and they might just really focus on changing their partner's mind. And one of the predictors of whether or not a marriage will be successful is how often you're able to not only hear and accept your partner's dream, but actually contribute to it. Whether that is just supporting them emotionally, or maybe like getting your hands in and actually physically helping them with this dream help them accomplish it. And our last level of the sound marital house is creating shared meaning. At this stage, what we are looking for is, are you able to intentionally create goals, purpose together? You know, one way we see this might be through family traditions you create with your partner, rituals you create with them. Something as simple as date night every Friday all the way up until as grandparents, maybe it's very important for both of you to have your grandchildren over every summer. Maybe you build your year around that. So having these shared goals, making meaning of your life together, being intentional about that, that is the last step in this sound marital house. All right, so those are the main concepts, right? That is what everything looks like when it's good. So now let's talk about the view of the problem. What are we looking for to say, okay, 
this couple might be at risk of divorce. So it's pretty much gonna be the opposite. Gottman coined the negative aspects of relationships, the things that could mean that the relationship is in trouble as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You gotta love a little drama with the names and titles of things. I just find these names super easy to remember because they're funny and dramatic, but But the ending of a marriage is dramatic as well, right? So I think that it's appropriately named and it makes it easier for you to remember. So here are the four horsemen. These four types of negativity, they are very highly predictive of divorce. And just to remind you guys, I really base everything I tell you on my AATBS book. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I would love to be, but just so you guys know, if you wanna take this offline and delve more into it, this is how I prepare for my exam, as I talked about, out in my video how to prepare for the marriage and family therapy exam my AATBS book I keep it right in front of me when I do these videos and so I'm definitely referring to it the first horseman of the apocalypse is criticism this is where you are essentially attacking your partner's character you're saying things like you're so lazy you're a bum you might say you're a weak person just saying things that completely attack who that person is that's criticism defensiveness this is where you really lack that accountability you don't want to accept any criticism from your partner or accept any responsibility for things that are going wrong contempt this is what I see most often in my sessions when I'm working with couples that are having issues and that is really where you establish a certain sense of superiority you belittle you're condescending to your partner you say things like oh yeah well of course you would think that right just basically saying like okay my thinking is elevated, my lifestyle is elevated, and you're better than your partner. When you start critiquing how they do their job, how they speak, you know, you're like, oh, you said that wrong, you wrote that wrong. That is really telling your partner that you are evaluating them and they're subpar. So that contempt can really, really be hard to get out of the cycle of doing, and it's definitely a major predictor for divorce. And then lastly, stonewalling. This is just complete withdrawal from interacting with your partner. You know, they're trying to talk to you about something and you're just completely cold to them. It's not always being completely mute. You know, you might actually engage, but it might be short answers. Like, why would you do that? I don't know. Right, that's stonewalling. That's saying, I am not willing to engage with you about this topic. And even if it hurts you, I don't care to make it better. So stonewalling is the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. The next concept that's important to remember as we talk about Gottman's view of the problem is the five to one ratio. And that's really simple. Basically saying that Gottman believed that a healthy couple had five positive comments or interactions to every one negative comment or reaction. So that's why I say it's not about having no negativity, it's about having little negativity. And and basically the closer you get to that ratio of one to one, one negative comment for every one positive comment, that is where you start seeing the relationship be in trouble. Even though the five to one ratio can predict divorce, he does make room for exceptions to that rule. There are some couples who might have more negativity and criticism in their relationship than positivity, but are able to navigate that and still make it work, according to Gottman. So first is what he describes as the volatile couple. This is a couple that really values honesty. They really feel like the most important thing is to tell the truth in the moment, right? So they're going to say everything that's on their mind, but if they both value that, then it can still work because really that's what a shared value is honesty and openness even if it's uncomfortable. Another type of couple that's able to maintain a pleasant relationship are validating couples. This is a couple that can express empathy, sympathy for their partner, even if they don't agree. Um, and for me, when I see these kind of couples, they usually don't predominantly have negativity over positivity, but Gottman does list this type of couple, the validating couple, as one of those couples that could positively manage a pleasant relationship. Lastly, you have the conflict avoiding couples. These are couples that will really ignore areas that could lead to conflict just to maintain the peace. 
I personally don't like seeing this when I am working with a couple, but Gottman does say that this is a couple type that could still maintain a pleasant relationship even if they uh, have some criticism in the relationship. So they might have more criticism than positivity, but they still are maintaining a relationship where there's not a ton of conflict. So the five to one ratio is basically being able to have more positivity than negativity. Further we get away from that, the more negativity that we have in comparison to that positivity puts couples at risk. But these three types of couples, according to Gottman, are able to still maintain a pleasant relationship, even if they don't have the five to one ratio or better. The next view of the problem is a term that Gottman refers to as negative affect reciprocity. And what that means is that basically you have one partner that might start out with some sort of negative communication and the other partner responds to it with more negativity than more negativity from the other one than more negativity from the other one and basically we're seeing an escalate from like maybe just anger maybe frustration to like contempt and criticism and so when we see couples who have this pattern that happens a lot where there's just fuel being added to the fire you got to outdo the other one and being mean being critical that's a high high predictor of divorce and lastly the last problem that you'll look for if you are using using Gottman's method is the distance and isolation cascade. And what that basically means is that it's kind of a pattern, right? So it starts with being overwhelmed with your partner's negativity. You, of course, then would view your marital problems as maybe like insurmountable, they're severe. And if you start viewing it as it's not possible for you all to fix this, you might just distance yourself to protect yourself and maintain the relationship. But the result of that distancing is isolation. You feel alone. And this is what happens by the time a lot of couples see me or any other marriage counselor. You've got one person, at least in the relationship, usually both, who's like, okay, we're married. We're together all the time. We've got kids. We live together. We sleep in the same bed, but I feel lonely. And that's how you end up in that space of feeling lonely is that basically from being so overwhelmed, you push yourself away and end up being isolated or as you push yourself away your partner feels isolated and alone I and mean, sometimes it's happening mutually you're both distancing yourselves just to avoid having so much conflict and negativity so that covers the view of the problem in the Gottman method okay so what is the goal of Gottman's model now there are a ton of terms that they have created to describe it um, down regulating up regulating but really it boils down to really lowering the negative interactions and increasing the positive interactions, making it so that when you have fights, you know how to quickly get to a space of still affirming and validating one another's perspective. You also want it when you're not having arguments that you're really building and creating that culture of positivity and affection in your relationships. You know, you want to have that date night planned. You want to have trips together. You want to have moments where you just sit and just compliment one another. These are the goals of Gottman's method is to just really help reduce the negative aspect of your relationship and increase those positive interactions. That's what it boils down to. Okay, so now let's talk interventions and techniques, our last section. Most important thing for the therapist to do when working with a couple using the Gottman method is to avoid taking sides. It can be so easy to be like, obviously it's your fault that this is what happened, right? Even in your mind, but you really wanna practice accurate empathy and be able to understand what's happening on both sides. You're serving more as like a coach, a consultant, helping them learn how to communicate in a way that's more effective and less negative. The first few sessions, you're information gathering. You're just trying to understand what's going on in this relationship. And then later on, you'll probably end up doing some individual sessions with both partners. Now I'm gonna talk about kind of like the guideline or the order of the sessions, the things you wanna be focusing on, especially in those information gathering sessions. So the first thing got and refers to as catching up. This is where you are finding out from both partners, either separate or together, about major milestones that have happened in the relationship, major events that have played out that they remember, you know, part of their narrative as a couple. Next, you have the pre-intervention marital intervention, also known as the boxing round. Um, and this is basically where you bring up one of the topics that has come up during that catching up phase and you see how they manage talking about this conflictual or sensitive topic. 
I think of this as like the observational period. This is how you see how they interact, how they engage with one another, and it gives you good ideas for interventions that might be useful with this couple. Then the next step, and I love this, is given intervention, but it's not what it sounds like. At this stage, you actually ask the couple to come up with an intervention based on the problem that they're having. What do they think could help them navigate past this so maybe let's say that they're struggling with attraction for example and the woman says i feel like you don't find me attractive anymore then therapist says okay well based on this issue you guys are talking around what do you think would be an effective way of addressing this today and maybe the woman says well it would be great to hear the things that he does find attractive about me that's an intervention. So anytime you are posing questions or having activities that provoke thought and can change minds in session, that is an intervention. And especially when they're able to do it outside of session. So at that point, say, okay, well, that's a great idea. Why don't you know you both share some of the things that you find physically attractive about one another or just attractive about one another in general. This gives the therapist insight into the couple's ability to create their own interventions. And by the way, when they get to the point where they can always come up with effective interventions to address their problems therapy's over right what do they need the therapist for they know now how to resolve conflict and work with one another now the next part is okay now make this intervention your own okay you said you wanted to find out what you find attractive about one another now this is the part where we can kind of dissect that now we turn to the husband is this something conducive with what you would regularly do does this feel comfortable for you asking the wife, does it feel weird for you to suggest that? Getting an understanding from them about, does this even like sync up with your personalities or your current dynamic in your relationship? Is it awkward to do this? Is it possible to do this? You know, whatever interventions one of them or both of them comes up with, talking with them about like, okay, well, how do you feel about this? This naturally leads into the next part, which is got resistance, question mark, right? Because let's say that husband says, I don't want to do that. That gives us something to work with. So tell me, what is it that makes you not want to tell her the things that you find physically attractive about her? And maybe he says, well, every time I give her a compliment, she twists my words and takes it as an insult. So now we can go further. Okay, how often has that happened? When is the last time that happened? And then ask her, you know, can you see it from his perspective why he might feel nervous about giving you a compliment? Do you remember those times where compliments were viewed or perceived as insults right so this actually gives us a lot to work with so whether or not we ever end up doing the intervention they suggested it gives us something to do in the session to help learn more about their own problem solving methods and then lastly homework this is where the therapist uses the intervention that they came up with the problems they expressed to figure out something they can do at home so then maybe we say okay so we weren't able to get to that intervention today where you share a compliment with each each other about your physical attraction well what about this how about when you go home maybe it's awkward to kind of talk about it in person maybe you feel like you're on the spot why don't you at least just write it down both of you write down three to five things that you find attractive about one another and when you come into session next time let's talk about whether or not you'd be open to sharing those things now that you've had time to think about it. And they might still say no, right? But then we can explore that resistance and the cycle starts all over again. So that's the process of therapy with Gottman's method. Because Gottman's method is so research-based, it's over 35 years worth of research at this point, they can even tell you how long sessions should be. You know, based on the severity of the couple's issues, you know, if they're coming to you and they're just trying to do a little bit of relationship enhancement they might benefit from about 10 sessions all the way to if we're dealing with like an extramarital affair or anything more severe we might be looking closer to 50 sessions or more Gottman's method is research-based and it's really focused on the predictability of divorce you know we're either looking 
for that solid house, you know, how sound is that house or those four horsemen. You know, if you see more horsemen than you do those building blocks for a solid house, that lets you know that the marriage is probably in trouble. So even though there is a lot of terminology in this model, really at the end of the day, it's a pretty simple model where we're just trying to see how much positive regard do these couples have within their relationship and if it's not there how can we build on it i hope that you found this breakdown useful i ask that you like this video subscribe to my channel share it with anybody that you think might find it useful that might be a therapist that might be someone in a relationship that might be somebody trying to get into a relationship i ask that you just help spread the word about the channel so that i can get more and more of your requests and make videos that you want. I think everyone who specifically requested Gottman's method, that helps me to know the models you guys are wanting to see. Let me know in the comments below what other models you want to see. I appreciate you for watching all the way until the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.